Hey everyone, my name is Casey Rain, and thanks for tuning into our Prince Facts series. Today, we're taking a look at one of the greatest albums of all time. The album that turned Prince from a music star into a pop culture and rock and roll icon. The album that was such an unprecedented success that it landed him the number one album in the charts, the number one single, and the top movie at the Hollywood box office all at the same time. We're talking about complete domination of the entertainment business. We're talking about the one and only Purple Rain. Now, of course, Purple Rain being Prince's peak in terms of commercial success has been covered extensively over the years. It's hard to say anything about Purple Rain that hasn't been said before. So that just means we had to dig even deeper to find the facts. And because it's actually quite hard to separate the music from the movie, in this video, we are going to discuss both. Before we get started, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when we upload our new videos. You're one of us now, and there's lots more facts to come. Thanks, friends. All right, so fact number one. We all know that Purple Rain was a smash hit, but let's try and quantify that with a number. So, Prince's previous album, 1999, was certified platinum with a million sales in May of 1983. That's seven months since its release the previous October. By contrast, according to Warner Brothers, Purple Rain sold 1.3 million copies on its very first day of release. That is an absolutely staggering sales figure, and Warner Brothers further claimed that every single copy of the album they had manufactured sold out within three days of release. This is even more impressive when you remember that the album was actually released before the movie. Fact number two. We tend to think of songs in the context of when they came out, and indeed, eight of the nine tracks on Purple Rain were written in what we consider to be the Purple Rain era, from mid-1983 to early 1984 for the recording sessions. The sole exception here is the song Baby I'm a Star. This song was actually originally written in late 1981, shortly after the release of the Controversy album. Fact number three. It seems crazy to think this in hindsight, but Warner Brothers Pictures were not convinced that the film would be a success originally. Originally, they had only planned to screen the movie in 200 theaters, which isn't a lot. Furthermore, after the first test screening was hugely positive, they still weren't convinced and accused Warner Brothers Music of getting Prince fans to the test screening. So, they ran another test screening in a very niche, whiter market, allegedly somewhere in Texas, and the results were once again overwhelmingly positive. At this point, and with a little bit of pressure applied by Warner Brothers Records boss Mo Austin, they understood that they had a hit on their hands, and Purple Rain opened at over 900 theaters, generating just shy of $8 million in revenue on its opening weekend alone. Fact number four. It's funny to think about the way movies are shot compared to the chronological sequence of the final edit, and Purple Rain was no exception. Many shots towards the middle and the last third of the movie, including Apollonia jumping into the lake, and the part where she joins up with Morris Day to put the group together, were filmed in the first few days of shooting in early November 1983, whereas all of Prince's performance scenes, including the opening scene of Let's Go Crazy, were filmed six weeks later, in the middle of December. Fact number five. Darling Nikki is one of the most iconic and memorable songs from the film and album. You probably already know that it was the opening lyric of this song that caused outrage in certain parts of America, leading directly to the creation of the now infamous parental advisory stickers that adorned many albums since. But who exactly was Nikki? Well, in the traveling My Name is Prince exhibition that opened at the O2 in London a few years back, pages from Prince's original script notes were on display, revealing that Nikki was short for the made-up name Nikathra, which was to be the name of Vanity's character in the movie, before she quit the project before filming began and was ultimately replaced by Apollonia. 
fact number six. The script was rewritten several times since the project was first started, and notably again at the last minute once Vanity was out and Apollonia was in. Apollonia, as you know, despite being cast due to Prince wanting someone visually similar to Vanity, ended up with a significant personality difference to the original female lead character of Vanity as Nikki, or Nicarthra, and I think this contributed to the success of the movie. You see, the original Nikki character, much like Vanity herself, had a personality and attitude that was a lot more like Prince and the Kid. Not only would she be literally named as the character described in the song lyrics to Darling Nikki, which already gives it a slightly dark edge, but in the lake scene, Nikki would have started really cussing the kid out about his lake stunt, calling him a prick and a bastard. Although I think the film would still have been successful, having a similar personality type between the two leads means some dynamic would probably have been lost. Part of the magic of the film for me was always that Apollonia was quite sweet and kind next to Prince's moody, darker kid. Furthermore, lines that were dropped once the change was made involved Nikki coldly telling Prince or the kid that Morris Day was a better musician, and telling him that he was nothing special and just spent his life hiding away. Back to number seven. Despite being the antagonist of the movie, many critics, fans, and reviewers felt that Morris Day's comedic performance was one of the highlights of Purple Rain. So much so that long before Graffiti Bridge was envisioned, Prince's manager Bob Cavallo actually pitched a Purple Rain 2 sequel idea to Prince, which was called The Further Adventures of Morris and Jerome, and had very little to do with Prince at all. Of course, Prince did not go for this idea, but he did take it on board. Jimmy Jam remembers that when Prince first called them up about Graffiti Bridge, the idea that he had in mind was that they would make a movie that actually did center around the time, rather than the kid. Of course, as we all know, that's not exactly what ended up happening, but that's a topic for another video. Fact number eight. One thing that bonded Prince with director Albert Magnoli was a shared love for Francis Ford Coppola and Mario Puzo's iconic movie The Godfather. So much so that there are two things in Purple Rain that are direct references to it. The first is Apollonia's name itself. This name comes from The Godfather, Apollonia being the name of the Sicilian woman that Michael Corleone marries while he's hiding out in Sicily after orchestrating the hit on Virgil Solozzo and Officer McCluskey. The second reference is in the opening scene of Let's Go Crazy. As you may remember, the scene cuts between shots of Prince performing the song and shots that set up the characters of the movie and their lives, Apollonia, Morris Day, Jerome, and the people of Minneapolis. This is a direct visual reference to the penultimate scene in The Godfather, where Michael Corleone sets up all the enemies of the Corleone family to be murdered whilst he is christening his firstborn in the church. Fact number nine. You probably know that singer Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac has mentioned in several interviews that at one stage, Prince played her the music to Purple Rain and asked if that would be something she'd be interested in writing a song to, but she felt overwhelmed by how epic the music was and didn't feel she could do it. You might also know that, of course, Prince played synthesizers on Stevie's song Stand Back. That was based on Little Red Corvette. But what you might not know is that on the 16th of July, 1983, Stevie visited Prince at his house and they actually did record a song together that night that has never been released. It's called I Know What To Say To You and is supposed to be sparse and experimental with just a lindrum and layers of synthesizers and the vocals. It would be great if this were to be released someday. Fact number 10. Perhaps thinking about how to continue the success of Purple Rain, after he himself wanted to move on to the next thing, Prince commissioned Apollonia 6 to make their own short film, although it's more of a very extended music video. Titled Happy Birthday Mr. Christian after one of the songs on the Apollonia 6 album, the 20-minute short film was never completed, but what was completed can be found on YouTube. It contains musical performance scenes of Happy Birthday Mr. Christian, Sex Shooter, Ushi Shiwawa and Blue Limousine, interspersed with very hokey dialogue sections, and a storyline where Mr. Christian is apparently their financier and sugar daddy who mysteriously dies and leaves them nothing in his will, forcing them out on the street. Except then he's not really dead and it was all some kind of weird test for no apparent reason. To be honest, it was most likely never completed because it's simply not very good. The final fact, in true cryptic form, 
Prince had his manager Stephen Fagnoli put out a message towards the end of the Purple Rain tour, announcing that Prince would be retiring from live performance for an indefinite period of time, and that the final show of the Purple Rain tour in Miami on the 7th of April 1985 would be his last performance for some time. But in a genius move, Prince set up songs that would appear on his next two albums in this message. In the message, Fagnoli says he asked Prince what he was going to do, to which Prince replied, I'm going to look for the ladder. Fagnoli then says he asked Prince what that meant, and Prince replied, sometimes it snows in April. Of course, fans would find out what one of those references was just two weeks after that final show. The Around the World in a Day album containing the song The Ladder was released just two weeks after the conclusion of the Purple Rain tour on the 22nd of April 1985. And of course, despite this statement, it wouldn't be long before Prince hit the stage again. Just two months later, on his birthday, the 7th of June 1985, Prince arranged an Around the World in a Day masquerade ball in Minneapolis, where he also performed. And that's it for another episode of The Facts You Didn't Know. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave us a comment and let us know. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, and we'll catch you next time. Peace, and be wild. Hey, St. Paul here. Make sure you go subscribe to The Violet Reality, the funkiest channel on YouTube.